if you observe the height of a person in one city or in one country they are fully normally distributed height weight iq marks in the examination of a university students so they are most of the natural things is highly normally distributed so in the case of the height if you see so most of the people their height is more or less near to the mean so if you take the average height suppose in any country average height is the 5.5 inch so you will see most of the populations they have the height is 5.5 or near to 5.5 so if you say this is the mean and you take the distribution of all the citizens of that country for their height you see this area is very common because this is the mean height and most of people are clustered near to the mean and very rare to see the see the very short people if you go here you will it will never touch the x axis if you go here you, you will get the short people if you go towards the right of the mean you will get the taller people but both short and the taller you will see very rare but most of people is near to the the mean average uh, average height right so suppose the the whole population this is the mean and this is the normal distribution so this part is showing the deviation so from the mean from the average height what is the height of a particular person that shows the deviation so two parameters are important here in normal distribution one is the mu and one is the standard deviation so if you see here the y axis that represent the probability so if you pick up any from this diagram what you understand if you pick up any people from the populations so most likely do that we have the near their height near about the mean so that is their height would be the more likely and if you see the very short people and the tall people their chances are very less so y axis represent the probability of the distribution and and the x axis is showing whatever the parameter you are taking for your research whether this is the height weight income education iq right so now another interesting part if you see the variety the uh, deviation is the too much here right so height might be you can consider from 3 feet to the 8 feet right might happen but if you see the height of the born baby right you will not get the more deviation so 80 90% born baby height would be the same right so in this case you can say the deviation is not much but the height is too much here because the probability is the too much similar probability if you take the any baby their height might be more or less similar to the other baby so see these are the some uh, facts are there if you want to draw the normal distributions what you should know what you should have to draw the distributions first you should know what is the mean of your data set and second how much deviation is there right so this shows the deviation here this is the deviation this is the deviations this shows the deviations right and one fact is there total area under the curve is always one because our the probability is always one for that and second thing if you see the ratio of the width here width is less then this is the taller curve right obviously because you have to maintain the one part right so if this is the curve is the ratio then you have to height is more if you curve is bigger your height is the less right and also one important fact it is always the symmetric so if you take the this half part is as it is equal to the uh, uh, left hand side is equal to the right hand side this is the symmetric and one uh, fifth very interesting fact it is called the empirical rule and this is also called the 60 95 rule what it will say is that so as i say this is the mean right and this is your deviation so if you see this is your first deviation right so this is the first so this is your first deviation this is the minus first deviation and here this is the first first standard deviation this part after this part this line is called the second standard deviation and here this chord is the 
first to second deviation, right? This is the one deviation, two deviation. This is the left side, so taking the negative. This is the right side, taking the positive. This is one deviation, two deviation, right? So empirical law is saying that that if you plus minus one, two, three. So in the mean, if you add the one as a standard deviation. So if this is your mean, if you add the one here, this is the plus one and the minus one, minus one is this side. So if you see that this part, what I put in the black color is the 68%. So this data is the 68% data. So it will solve your many problem. So what happened in any case, suppose your mean height is the five, mean height is the five. And suppose this is the mu is the five and the standard deviation is the one. Then easily you can see that five plus one plus one seven, right? So from here, this is the four, from here, this is the six. So the height, the person who height between the four to six must be the 68% populations. So without doing anything, we can calculate here with the help of the empirical rules, right? So again, if this is, then this is become the three and this become the seven. So what is the population between the 3 and 7? This is the 2 SD, so 2 SD is 95%, right? So this is why the empirical rule is very useful when your data is normally distributed. So this is called the normal distribution. Why this is very important uh, terminology of the distributions? Because if your data set is normalized, then it will be easy to solve a complex problem also. Because we have the Z table. So from that table, easily you can find out that if the mean is there and standard deviation is this much, then what is the probability? So I will explain the next topic, the central mid theory. That central mid theory is saying that how you can convert any distribution into the normal distributions, right? So this is also a very important topic. So let me uh, now explain what is the central mid theory. So this is also one of the very interesting, useful tool. Uh, that is central limit theorem. That is a theorem, you are not going to prove this theorem and you are not going to solve anything. Just you are going to discuss what this theorem says, right? This is very important theorem. So this central limit theorem is saying that if your population, so suppose if this is your population distribution. So if your population distribution is any shape, that could be normal shape, that could be a skewed shape, this is a non-uniform or uniform shape. If you take the sampling distribution, right, we have already uh, uh, know what is the sampling distribution. So if you take, take the sampling distribution and draw the mean, means suppose this set of data. So if you take the this set of data, this set of data, this set of data, this set of data, suppose this is a S1, S2, uh, sorry, x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar, x4 bar. And if you draw here, magically you will see you get the normal distributed data. So if data is any shape, even, even if you take, take the samples from here, 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 and you draw the sampling distribution of the mean, you will see magically you will get the normal distributions. And this theorem is saying, this theorem is saying that the uh, central mid theory state that regardless of the distribution of the pop population, means your population distribution could be anything, even the distribution is unknown, we don't know which kind of distributions our population is that. If you take the large enough number of same size random sample, means you should have the enough maximum number of the sample, but sample size must be same, very important. And calculate the mean of the each sample group, your sampling mean will appear like a normal distribution. This is the magic. So if your data is any form, any distribution, take the sampling, your data becomes the normal distribution. And this is a very useful theorem in the statics. It will solve a lot of problems. So this theory we apply in the parametric hypothesis testing where we have the t-test, ANOVA, 
and they require the normal distributed data, right? So suppose your population is this much and you have to perform this kind of testing. So what you will do that you need the normal distributed data. So you can apply this theorem and you can get your normal distributed data, right? So we can easily solve that. And again, if your data distributed is normally, you can solve many complex problems very easily, right? So there are the four important things in the center limit theorem. First is saying that mean of the sample mean means what the, this is the sample mean, right? This I took the sample and I took the mean. So mean of the sample mean is equal to the mean of the population. Means if you take the mean of the, this sample mean and it will, the what is the population mean, it more or less would be the equal. Independent of the sample size, sample size could be anything. but all the samples should have the same size. Independent of sample size means it's small, big size I'm saying, but all the sample size should be the same size. So this second point is showing me saying that the standard deviation of all the mean means uh, x by is the mean of the each sample, each sample mean equal to this formula. So if any two thing is given, you can find out the third part with this formula if you apply the central mean theorem. Third important is saying, is saying if population is the normal, take in this case, your population is already in normal, then you take the sampling distribution of the mean that have the normal distribution again independent of the sample size. So if you take the sampling distribution from the normal distributed population, whatever the size of your sample, but again I am saying all the sample size should have the same sample. But whatever the size of the each sample, you will get the normal distributed that the center meets him is saying. And fourth is the most important. If your population is not normal, means any shape, you take, take about this shape. But if the sample size is the n is equal to 30. So if you take the sample size, 30, what is 30? 30 is called the magic number. It has been already proven that if your sample size is more than 30 and you calculate the sampling distribution of the mean of any unknown, any shape of population data, finally you will end up in the normal distribution. So this four statement are there from the central theory. It will be able to convert any distribution in the normal distributions. So thank you very much. These are the four topics we cover in these videos. Thank you.